Hello and welcome to this episode of We Talk Audio. Uh, I'm your host Luca and joining me today is Giacomo Previ. Uh, Giacomo is our uh, OEM sales manager. Uh, he deals uh, with uh, uh, all sorts of products that uh, uh, many power soft users uh, don't even know uh, uh, they probably exist, like uh, modules, uh, uh, some transducers, although we've been uh, making sure to let everybody know about Mover and M-Force uh, in the last few years, uh, and of course uh, OEM uh, amplifiers. Uh, welcome, uh, welcome to welcome. We Talk. Thank you very much, and everybody. So I hope I, I didn't butcher the presentation here, uh, <laughs> but uh, maybe you can uh, add uh, something more uh, to what I said. Uh, uh, Giacomo and I uh, uh, share, uh, often share car rides and uh, we have long music talks and uh, yeah. so it's, uh, it's, it's harder to interview him than uh, with other people because uh, uh, we can get quite personal actually. Yeah. So where did it all start? Wow. It's, it's a long story, actually. So maybe we can just start uh, to from, from the real beginning, because when I, I was really, really, I would say, young, I started to enjoy music, uh, music from uh, very, very big groups like uh, Pink Floyd, Genesis, and King Crimson, and all these unbelievable groups. And I was always fascinated about sound and uh, synthesizers, I have to say, so electronics in general. And uh, then that was actually quite a long experience in starting to work with these uh, wonderful machines uh, when I was 20, 25, was playing in a band. And I had great experience, nothing professional, but a lot of fun. Then actually after university, uh, I was looking for a job and I got the opportunity to, to, to work for uh, RCF. That's a manufacturer based in Reggio Emilia, Italy, the north of Italy. And uh, starting there as let's say, kind of technical support person for Italy. And then progressively, I get in love with the professional audio in general and became product manager for them for actually quite a lot of years. Actually, it was almost 30 years ago. Yeah. And then, uh, wow, uh, it's, it's actually Yeah, time a, flies. Time flies, yes. Then, uh, just to make the story short, I then uh, jump into 18 sound experience. That's... Uh, professional transducer manufacturer always based in, uh, in Italy, in Reggio Emilia. That uh, manufacturer was actually specialized in uh, loudspeakers for professional audio manufacturers as well. And that's where I started to know all the, let's say, inside of the industry in terms of uh, very big customers that are playing around for touring and install. And uh, it was quite interesting to know all the people there. are. Always, almost everybody is passionate about music. Music is the it's a universal language that is uh, making us working in this industry. At least this is what I was experiencing. And then in uh, 2018, I joined PowerSoft in the OEM business. And then I started to do the same kind of approach to, with customers with electronics. So I came back to my original uh, passion. And uh, so I'm playing with these uh, wonderful toys and with the people that are using them for big, big... Uh, concerts, events, so happy to do that. Yeah, yeah, and uh, so maybe we can uh, dive a little bit more into the music uh, aspect of it. Mm -hmm. uh, see, I have, I have sort of the same uh, upgrade, upbringings with uh, a lot of passion for music and also the technical side of it, and uh, uh, mostly by, you know, taking things apart and uh, failing to putting them back together. <laughs> And all of that, and uh, you 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 eventually end up with a synthesizer in front of you. But after that, there's like you know a turning point, and that's where you go like, all right, let's let's be serious here. I'm not gonna be the next dead mouse. So yeah, um, let me find a way to 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 use my skills and uh, and uh, possibly share the passion that I have with other people. Uh, so uh, you you play the trumpet, right? You yeah, be... actually, that was, uh, let's say, a time uh, when I was maybe 21. It was actually one of my friends that was actually making me listening uh, an album of Miles Davis, that is Beaches Brew, and that was kind of a 
quite of experience and then I decided wow that could be my instrument my main instrument actually casually my, but not casually my, my father was playing trumpet and in my family there are a lot of my grand, grandfather was playing trumpet as well and then uh, there were trumpets in, in my home but I never tried to play oh, wow. one so I actually say wow I want to go this direction and I tried the trumpet and it didn't work so it took three years uh, and I remember I made a lot of training and courses to try to understand how to play because, you know, sometimes you're not made for that. Yeah. And then after several years, I could say that I can play decently some jazz and some uh, ambient and I like to process the sound and making nice, interesting experiments with the trumpet and still synthesizers. Awesome. Awesome. So it's, it's a psychedelic uh, some sort of uh, progressive, yeah. let's call it, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> experimentation with pedals and uh, yeah. awesome stuff, awesome stuff. And uh, do you have anything that really inspired you uh, to really uh, dig deeper in what uh, the technical aspect of making live music or uh, uh, professional high-grade installation that really blow your mind, you know? Yeah, actually I was always fascinated by how the sound has been reproduced in terms of uh, quality and actually in parallel with the music passion I had this passion with high fidelity that was actually a big uh, uh, big uh, let's say trend in the in the 70s and the 80s not anymore actually not not so much anymore so I was able to to build uh, my own uh, my own uh, personal hi-fi system and then actually I was starting to, to read a lot of music stuff and, and how big, uh, uh, big players are actually trying to change the way the people are actually experiencing sound during uh, uh, exhibitions, during uh, uh, concerts. And I was always fascinated again by the Pink Floyd because they were really innovators about the fact that I was just discovering that they were the first one, they were actually able to uh, get people uh, able to listen to immersive experience already in the 60s because in the 67 they made the first immersive audio concert in uh, in London and with this quadraphonic system that was quite kind of innovative at the time and there was no surround capability there was no DSP digital sound processing capability at the time so it was simply mixing uh, in a different way instead of making stereo left and right they made four channels but it was quite an innovation and uh, so if you think now the path in uh, making the sound better and better uh, and then now you have these things like the new the new sphere that is going to be opening in uh, end of september end of this month in las vegas they're actually making this concept in a very different perspective it's fascinating there are more than 50 years that this thing is coming is going on so it's trying to expand from the stereo to something more to make the, the let's say the, the listener able to to be uh, involved with the artist while he's playing so it's this is something that I was always fascinated to me so I'm part of this process now so it's uh, quite uh, exciting yeah yeah I, I believe that if you if you want to dig a lot deeper in the matter of immersive audio and in this circle that uh, we are making uh, you can really dig into uh, what uh, uh, anthropology has to teach us about music. So uh, mm. we, we have the first gatherings of people just playing rocks and vibrant uh, uh, rocks and uh, cockles and, uh, yeah. <laughs> and whatnot. And, and the whole community was involved. Then you have the era in which uh, uh, everybody recalls the picture of the Beatles uh, at their first U.S. show with this little PA uh, that was definitely not enough. And, uh, and that is where you get the switch. That is where the artist becomes a superstar. Uh, and and if, you, if, if I step a little bit uh, further back, uh, opera and uh, theater experience and concert experience were uh, both something for the upper, uh, upper class, but it was something that was for the middle and the lower class as well. And that, that's where you get uh, really immersive experiences in which the public is part of uh, yeah. the uh, performance itself and uh, uh, now uh, we're going back to that uh, through placing the audience uh, right on the soundstage so um, 
the Sphere is doing it, Fraunhofer is doing it, a lot of uh, research uh, houses are doing it, and it's just a matter of uh, uh, time uh, and uh, that we will able to be able to enjoy such technologies in the comfort of our home and possibly uh, get back to listening uh, music to uh, the same standards at which it is produced. <laughs> uh. Yeah, you're, you're correct. And actually, I think is now is the we have uh, we are living in the time where sound will definitely come back as the thing to to be, let's say, placed at the first level when you are going to a concert. Typically, you say I'm going to to see a concert or you're going to listen to a concert because I w I would say that maybe in the last 20 years or so, maybe the sound system were not let's say the primary point of interest for a touring. Uh, uh, let's say uh, production because of course costs uh, logistics and everything but now I mean the sound is going back to be the first point where you have to be uh, let's say focused I mean again things like the sphere it's changing completely the, the experience and uh, in another way even base reproduction I think is quite interesting because this is one of the, the most interesting thing you, you were talking about uh, uh, studies about how you can, uh, let's say, mm, turn the, the audience in, uh, in, in a positive way and in conjunction with the artist. So I think that bass reproduction, the way you are able to, to make this bass flowing in, into, the, into the audience is uh, quite interesting. And this is something that we are trying to explore. I yeah. mean, this is not uh, uh, by case, but I was always loving bass sound, subwoofer sound, infra, infra sound. And uh, yeah, we, we are doing something like that, and we we just had, um, you know, uh, the even in the sphere we have a lot of uh, technology with the, the baser production uh, controlled by by PowerSoft uh, iPod mod. Uh, that's this uh, real time uh, feedback control on the on the transducer. But then I, I you probably know uh, the the very famous tour of U2, the 360 degree uh, tour was uh, using a lot of uh, IPAL mode subwoofers uh, technology. They were putting a lot of them in, uh, in, in a circle, uh, you know, in the stage. Area. Yeah. And that was quite, a, quite amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Indeed. Dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> and just to, just to add on this, like to quote uh, uh, Dinosaur of the industry, J uh, Dave Ratt, uh, he says, uh, he's cool, he says, um, I can't recall anybody humming uh, or whistling the light show after a show. So uh, music will definitely take center stage uh, in the near future. Also, uh, it's becoming uh, always, e it's becoming easier to really uh, manage and uh, reproduce uh, this sort of frequencies. Um, just, just the sheer capability of the modern processing uh, itself, it's uh, able to uh, really overcome some of the physical limitation of, uh, of the speakers, of the venues in which they're mounted, uh, but most of all, uh, the people that are operating it. Uh, so the guesswork is uh, uh, finally over, the math uh, in the back of the uh, cigarette pack is over, uh, <laughs> it's all done in the box. And, and I think this is, uh, this is a great equalizer. And it will definitely make uh, the future sound even better yeah so uh, all right this is this is very interesting this this one is this one is a good one eh? Uh, <laughs> not that the other ones weren't but I told you hey, we, we're, we're comfortable with each other I think that uh, we can we can close this uh, episode uh, oh. Okay. Thank you. That's a pity. I was enjoying that. Oh, well, we can. <laughs> <laughs> we need to stay under 12, 15 minutes. So I think we're on it. All right. Okay. Thank you very much, Giacomo. Thank you. Thank you. And I will see you very soon in my car going back home to Reggio Emilia. Okay. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>